Let's imagine we have a five gram block of ice with the current temperature of negative 30 degrees Celsius. What's gonna happen if we add some heat to this block of ice? Well, clearly if we add some heat to this block of ice, the temperature is gonna increase. For example, let's say we add some heat to this block of ice and let's say its temperature increases from negative 30 degrees Celsius to perhaps negative 15 degrees Celsius. And let's represent this process with the graph where this axis represents the, temp the current temperature of the block of ice, while this axis represents the added heat. So we've added this amount of heat, and once we've added this amount of heat, we saw the temperature increase from negative 30 degrees Celsius all the way up to 15 degrees Celsius. Now what's gonna happen if we add more heat to this block of ice? Well, again, if we add more heat to this block of ice, the temperature is going to increase again. So now let's say we add more heat, and now let's say the temperature increases from negative 15 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. So now we've added this extra amount of heat, and once we've added this extra amount of heat, the temperature increased from negative 15 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. But you might wonder exactly how much heat, exactly how much heat was this required, exactly how much heat was required to increase the temperature from negative 30 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius? Exactly how much heat does this represent? Well, to determine that, we use our specific heat capacity formula. And we know the way this formula works. If we know the mass of an object, we know the specific heat capacity of that object, and we know the change in temperature we've observed with that, with that object, we can determine how much heat was required to cause that observed change in temperature. And in reality, ice has a different specific heat capacity, but I'm using this value for simplicity. But now we can use this formula to determine exactly how much heat was required to cause that change in temperature, that change in 30 degrees Celsius temperature. So again, we just plug in our values. We have a five gram block of ice, with this specific heat capacity, and we observed a change in temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So under those conditions, we can determine exactly how much heat was required to cause that change in temperature under those conditions. So with some simple math, we would get 600 joules. So now we know we needed 600 joules to increase the temperature of this five gram block of ice from negative 30 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. So now we have a five gram block of ice with the current temperature of zero degrees Celsius. Now what's gonna happen if we add more heat? Well, remember the melting point of, of ice is zero degrees Celsius. So yeah, originally when we added heat, we saw the temperature increase. However, once we've added enough heat to increase the temperature to zero degrees Celsius, now when we add more heat, now that heat is gonna be used to melt this block of ice. So now we add more heat and now this, this block of ice is gonna start to melt. So we add this extra amount of heat, and once we've added that amount of heat, we started melting the block of ice. But you might wonder, why is the temperature still zero degrees Celsius? Because again, before when we added heat, we saw the temperature increasing. However, now we've added this amount of heat, but the temperature is still zero degrees Celsius. What's going on? Well, a really important point is once you've reached the melting point, now when we add more heat, all that heat is preoccupied with melting this block of ice. All that heat is preoccupied with overcoming and breaking those intermolecular water bonds forming the solid. So all that heat is preoccupied with melting this block of ice and there's no heat left over to increase the temperature. So that's important to realize once you start melting a, a solid, all that heat is going to be used to melting the solid and then only after you've completely melted that solid, then adding more heat will increase the temperature. But again, so now we're at this condition, so now let's say we add more heat. What's gonna happen when we add more heat? Well, again, that heat's gonna be used to melt the block of ice. So we've added this extra heat and we've melted it more. But again, we're still at zero degrees Celsius cause all that heat is preoccupied with melting the block of ice. Now let's imagine we add a little more heat and now when we add that more heat, now this block of ice has completely melted. And now you might wonder, exactly how much heat was required to completely melt that five gram block of ice? Because again, we had this large amount of heat that we added. And again, exactly how much heat was required to fully melt that, that five gram block of ice? Well, to determine that, we need to know this very important term referred to as the latent heat effusion. So all solids have their own latent heat effusions. For example, ice, happens to have a latent heat effusion of 100 joules per grams. And essentially what this latent heat effusion value tells us, it tells us about how much heat is required to melt a certain solid. 
So this tells us, this value tells us about how much heat is required to melt a block of ice. And we can use this simple formula to determine how much heat is required to fully melt a certain solid. So again, we, this represents the original mass of that solid uh, block of ice, and this represents the latent heat of that material, which happened to be ice. So plugging in our values, we know we, know we, had a, we originally had a 5-gram block of ice, with, uh, with which had, that material had this particular latent heat of fusion, and now we simply just multiply those. We see the grams cancel, we get joules, and that'll tell us exactly how much heat was required to fully melt that 5-gram block of ice into water. So again, simple math, we just multiply them, now we get 500 joules, so now we know. To fully melt a 5-gram block of ice into water, it requires 500 joules. And to really clarify what's going on, let's do another example. Let's say we had a 1-gram block of ice with the current temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. How much heat would be required to fully melt that 1-gram block of ice into water? Well, again, we use our simple formula. We have a 1-gram block of ice. We know the, this ice material happens to have a latent heat of fusion, 100 joules per gram, and now we just multiply them. Grams cancel, and we would get, essentially, we would, we would get 100 joules. So now we know to fully melt a 1 gram block of ice into water, it requires 100 joules, and this makes sense. If we have a 5 gram block of ice to fully melt it, we need 500 joules. If we have a 1 gram block of ice to fully melt it, we need 100 joules. And it makes sense, if we have 5 times the amount of mass, it would require five times the amount of heat to fully melt that, that, that object. So now that we know this, where are we now? So now we've added that heat, we fully melted that block of ice, and now we have a five gram puddle of water with the current temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So in the next video, I'll talk about what happens once we add more heat. And, and when we add more heat, essentially what happens is now that we fully melted that block of ice, now when we add more heat, the temperature of this water is going to increase. And I have a link below on that video that's going to go over the, what goes on after this.